All right, campers, uh, let's try to find the domain of, of these functions. So we've got a square root. So, and if, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of chapters ago, uh, we saw how to find the domain of a square root. <clears throat> and that was where you took whatever's on the inside and you set it greater than or equal to zero because the inside can't be negative. Well, look at what you just set up. You just set up an inequality. So now you gotta solve it using the techniques that we just did. Uh, this one though, it's just not factored, so factor it. <clears throat> so plot an x squared. Now you can get your zeros. <clears throat> So that would be zero and three. So you can set up your number line. And now you can test them. So let's go with negative one, one, and six. <clears throat> okay, so again, plug them back into your inequality and you can plug them into the original or the factored. The factored one's usually faster. So if I plug in that negative one, it's a positive and a negative, so a minus. If I plug in the one, positive and a negative, so that's a minus, so aha, it did not alternate. If I plug in the six, positive, positive, so positive. Okay, so I want, what makes it greater than or equal to zero, so I want the plus signs. So that would be three, to infinity but this is where it can be a little tricky because you want it greater than or equal to zero so there's a number on this side that makes it equal to zero and that was zero itself so we have to include that one solution of zero it's not an interval it's just a single number off on its own. So for single numbers, if you have a situation like this, just surround it with the curly brackets. It's set builder notation. Um, so just be careful. Okay, part B, um, I'll let you guys check that one out on your own. So let's move on to example four, using the gr a graph to solve an inequality. So graphs are kind of nice to use if you've got one. So I want where the function is greater than zero. So that means I wanna know where the y values are bigger than zero or where the y values are positive. So I wanna know what sections of the graph are sitting above the x-axis. So if I look down at my function, the sections that are above would be this piece and then this little hill right there. So now I wanna read them off from left to right. Like what those blue pieces of the graph from left to right, where are they sitting? Like what X values are they covering? Well, on this section over here, that first one, that is coming, or that's covering negative infinity to negative two. <coughs> And there's no equal bar, so put a parenthesis. And then the little hill is sitting between zero and one. So just like that. <clears throat> so B, you want it less than or equal to zero, so now it's the f reverse of that, the flip. So you want where the y values, the sections where the y values are negative or below your x-axis, so that would be this little valley right in there, and then the tail end of it there, so the green sections. So the green sections, if we read them from left to right, what do the green sections cover? Like what x values are these covering? Well, that's gonna be on the valley part, negative two to zero, but I'm gonna put brackets because it has the equal bar. And then the second green section, this tail end of it, 
it starts at one and then it keeps going on forever and ever. So one to infinity. So given a choice, I would much rather work with a graph than an actual function, um, just because it's a little bit faster. It's, it's very visual. Um, and you don't really have to do a whole lot of math there. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at these two. And that will be it for the section. Okay, so g of x is less than or equal to zero. So that means I want where it's below your x-axis. So that would be that whole section right there. Because at the two, it doesn't go above, it stays below. Like it hits the x-axis and then bounces back down. So this whole region from negative three to five is below the x-axis. Now the two, that's where it equals zero, which is okay. I want it, to, it can't equal zero. If the equal bar was gone, then I'd have to leave two out uh, from the interval. All right, part D. Now I want where it's above. So that would be this section here and this section here. So the two ends. So on the first end, it's negative three down to negative infinity. And then the other one starts at five and keeps going. So five through infinity. All right, part H, uh, greater than or equal to zero. That's where it's above. So what sections are above? Well, that would be that section and this one. So from negative two to zero, I can't include negative two because that's my actual vertical asymptote. I can include the zero though because it's got the equal bar in it. There's an actual point there. And then union uh, two, a parenthesis again, because I can't include it, that's the vertical asymptote, uh, on to infinity. All right, part F, less than zero, so you want it below. So that would be this section, and then this little part right in there. <clears throat> okay, so this section is negative infinity up to negative two. And then this part started at zero and goes to two, but it doesn't actually hit it. So zero to two. All right, not too bad. Okay, so try the homework out and contact me if you have questions. So good luck.